I'm not gonna sit here and cry but I got laid off of my first postgrad job and the one that took me five months to find that I moved to New York City for. Basically, it's not my fault before we start. I worked for a startup and they didn't have the workload or the bandwidth that they needed to train me and to give me work to do. I am Jack's complete lack of surprise. Yeah, that's not why they fired you. You see, employers will never fully give you the reason for why they lay you off. And if you don't know why, well, I'm a certified gent, so I'm more than happy to remind you. I know I'm probably just being so dramatic and annoying, but this is my first job, like my first nine to five job after college. And I'm in person and I'm commuting in the city and it takes forever to get there. There's no way I'm gonna be able to afford living in the city right now. So that's off the table, like, duh. If I was able to walk to work and it would be fine. Here's some information for you, toots. Employers really don't like it when you record yourself complaining about how unfair it is to have gainful employment. Talking smack about the people who pay you for your time, provide you with health insurance, and potential retirement benefits is typically a bad idea. That kind of ungrateful behavior will almost all but guarantee that you will not survive the first round of company layoffs. Now, most functioning adults are actually aware of this little tidbit, but I don't suppose I should be surprised that you didn't know this because you don't operate on basic logic. You operate on your fifis because you think your social media following somehow gives you a pass when it comes to not having to know basic logic. Go ahead and keep on thinking that, sister. See where it gets you. Like, I didn't, I wasn't doing anything that I was hired to do, and I was really wanting to learn, so I was thinking in my head that I wanted a job with more responsibilities anyways, but I, come January 2nd, I need a new job and I don't have one. I even told most of my friends, if I post this, it's because I actually thought it through. Getting laid off before the holidays, that means the hiring processes stop right before Christmas and then they go all the way till January 2nd and then they pick back up. And it's still gonna probably be two, three week process to hire and onboard for a new job. So that's the time frame I'm looking at and I can't wait that long. I need a job immediately. Okay, princess, that's it. The fairy tale is over. Welcome to real life. Well, at least you have a sense of urgency. Good for you, but you simply have no idea how job hunting works. There is no chance in H-E double hockey sticks that you're gonna be able to find a job immediately. That's simply not how it works. Even if you flood the internet with your less than stellar resume, you live in New York, a crime-ridden cesspit packed to the brim with junkies, psychos, and stockbrokers who laugh at your suffering. The city is also filled with delusional college grads with the exact same skill set as you in a market with virtually no job openings. The competition is going to be a bloodbath. And much like your love life, you have zero desirability. You have five months of work experience. And thanks to your viral video, employers aren't going to risk hiring you and risk embarrassment because you're butthurt over the fact that you have to work a 40 hour work week. But there I go, spitting out common sense again. <laughs> I'm sorry, I keep forgetting about that. Job that I was working nine to five from, I wasn't making enough to live. I didn't, I don't have a savings because of that job. Like the salaries that people are making with a degree right now after college, is just not okay. Oh, this is just so shocking. I mean, I must just be so monumentally naive. You are. We're working so much and I still don't have an emergency fund. I don't because I wasn't making enough to save any of it. Everything was going towards living and expenses and commuting and everything else. And to go through the whole entire hiring process again is going to actually kill me. It's so defeating. It's so disappointing. And it makes you feel like you're not good enough. And I know that I am. I know that I'm a hard worker. That's not my problem. It's yours. I get it. Being unemployed sucks. Looking for a job sucks. And living paycheck to paycheck sucks. But here's a quick question for you. If you were working so hard and weren't able to save any money, then how, in the name of the shimmering kneecaps of the intergalactic space god Flobachert, all hail his glorious glory, were you able to afford those god-awful nails and gaudy jewelry? If money was as tight as you claim, then you shouldn't have a budget for such luxuries, which means that you were blatantly irresponsible with at least some of your earnings. Anybody with half a brain could have told you that moving to New York City during one of the worst possible times to work for a startup was a bad idea. Hell, even the rats could have told you that and they make up 42% of the city's population. My boss literally said that I'm one of the smartest people he's ever had work under him and he knows that I'm gonna land on my feet and he'll give me a great referral to anybody, so don't start. I have a degree, I've done everything I'm supposed to do. I had two internships, I built a portfolio, I worked freelance out of school because I was building my portfolio, taking the time, did things for free. I have done everything I possibly could have 
and it's still not enough. You're putting yourself in debt to go to college and you still can't find a job that pays enough for you to live and have a balance with life too. It's like, I'm just hoping that this is just a transition period. So come on, welcome to me trying to find another job and maybe I'll nanny, maybe I'll serve until I find another full-time position that's in marketing. That's something that I wanna do. If you know any marketing positions hiring, any social media digital, mar digital marketing hiring, let me know. <laughs> <laughs> you have a bachelor's degree in marketing oh man you are so boned how could you have not known that artificial intelligence was about to roll in and completely make your profession obsolete this wasn't an industry secret this has been in the works for a while now agencies are always looking for a cheaper alternative to pesky humans and machines are cheaper require less in terms of benefits and they won't complain about how terrible their lives are. The only drawback is they will eventually grow sentient, destroy humanity, and rule the planet with their army of advanced combat cyborgs. But don't worry, if your boss says you're smart, then you should be fine. Most of the time I love being single. I am very comfortable being single. Really? But tonight, I hung out with friends and I had a great time and then I was driving home and I started feeling this like wave of depression and anxiety and I I wasn't really sure what it was related to or where it was stemming from and then I, I got home and I felt like just so sad and lonely. Nobody cares, Sean. Nobody cares. Translation, you are miserable. As a single childless woman in her 30s, you're making feeble attempts to try and fight the soul-crushing reality that you wasted the most fertile years of your life for stupid reasons. The never-ending void of your own loneliness is made even worse when you realize that all of your friends are happily married with children and you lead a life completely devoid of any meaning. You know exactly why you feel anxious and lonely, but you make poor attempts to try and fool yourself into thinking that you're happy living the single life, but deep down, you know. That's a meaningless life filled with pre-prepared food, boxed wine, and a crippling addiction to social media. On a scale of 1 to 10, how are we doing so far? And I walked into my empty apartment and I thought, God, I wish that I had someone who could just hold me right now. Like, I wish that I had someone who could just take care of me because I have to take care of myself every single day and it's fucking exhausting and i just want someone to take care of me every now and then you called down the thunder well now you got it Sorry, lady, the train to Sympathyville has left the station and it ain't coming back. You had multiple chances in your life to find a decent guy, to settle down and have a family with a support system consisting of a loving husband, but instead you decided to mainline an unhealthy amount of Kool-Aid to inexplicably believe that you didn't need a man for anything. You ignored us, so we did you the same kindness to let you live your life of glorious independence. And now that you're starting to realize that independence requires actual work, you want a man to swoop in and take care of you and that's simply not how it works men are actually pre-programmed to live independently with a heavy pinch of stoicism which is a quality that you clearly lack and that is a decision you'll have to live with when you're dedicating 50 percent of your household income to your slew of cats i've 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 not been I've not been on a dating site for a half a day. A half a day and uh, people who invent online dating, can, can I just offer a, a suggestion? You know how you have that section where it's like, you can put in the height that you would like, religion, distance, like stuff like that. How about where I can like put in a name or at least a search bar where I can put, like look for a name and block them or an email address or telephone number or something like that, block them. <laughs>
You dumb bastard. Well, I suppose they could go and do that, but you already have their phone number or email address, so you can just block them yourself. You don't need a dating app for that. You just need to have painfully terrible taste in men and a desire for self-sabotage, which you clearly have both of in spades. You don't need an app for that. You've already got, what, five or six of them, and none of them are clearly helping. I don't think any of your problems are going to be solved simply by preemptively blocking people. Your problems are most likely going to be solved by getting off the dating apps, getting into therapy, and taking accountability for the fact that you've made terrible life choices when it comes to men. Who are we kidding? All of us know that what I'm proposing is virtually impossible with you. I don't care if there are five billion, what, Kevin Smith, John Doe, whatever in the world i don't care i don't care if one of those people are my soulmates it's not worth the risk help them because when i get an email or a comment on my photo where they're like oh my god amy i've been looking for you for 13 years you know why you couldn't find me because you've been blocked Jesus. It's science fact. The average human who possesses basic intelligence on par with a typical New York sewer rat all know that dating apps are pretty much where dating goes to die. The only people there are Chad, Simps, and idiots. And woman, you do look and sound like you're packing some meat and two veg down there, but you're certainly not Chad, and you're too stuck up to be a simp. So naturally, the simps and idiots are gonna flock to you so they can have a desperate attempt to find out if you actually have a dingy knothole of musty disappointment between your legs. You honestly didn't think you'd be able to find a decent guy there, did you? Because if you did, that means your brain power is on par with a typical malnourished gerbil. Nothing! Absolutely nothing! Stupid! You're so stupid! For all my social media, because I never wanted to see you again. But guess who is almost 46 and got pathetic? <laughs> me. And you found me. You found me. <laughs> Do I want a second date? Buddy, we didn't have a first date. You weirded me out at our meet and greet. You... He thought we had a relationship. <laughs> he was like, oh, this is fate. <gasps> oh, Man, you are one pathetic loser. Oh, woman, you're selling yourself short. You're not pathetic. You're extremely pathetic. You're sitting there thinking you can compete with a 26-year-old idiot on these apps when your personality traits are condescending, loathsome, and apparently drunk. You simply cannot handle the fact that if you were damaged goods, it would be a drastic improvement over what you currently are right now. The only reason you're on these apps is because you clench onto this delusional glimmer of hope that there's one man out there who's going to tolerate your antics and fix all of your problems and that's simply not the case he's too busy learning how to deal blackjack and the rest of the simps out there will gladly flock to you because they are that star for attention and even though your meat is rotten those simps aren't gonna care they are so starving they'll gladly scarf down that meat even if it means that you make them vomit uncontrollably <laughs> And that's gonna do it for today's video, gentlemen and gents. As always, if you find that my particular brand of comedy is bringing you to the brink of laughter, then why don't you scroll on down and click that like and subscribe button and ring the notification bell so we can give the good old-fashioned middle finger to the YouTube algorithm. Thank you so much for checking out the new video, and until next time, peace out, homies.